Tonight is March the 23rd, 2015, and I have a gorgeous instrument here. A, uh, let's see, it's labeled as a Deluxe Scintillator, and it works. I've had these things before that I've gotten for basically nothing, and they didn't work. This one works. Here's the manual with it. Look what this thing cost in 1954. $495. It's got everything in here, schematic and all. This is the battery pack. Well, let me show you the real, the real thing. This is the battery pack right down here. It uses a 67 and a half volt and two 22 and a half volts and four one and a half volts. This thing is full of batteries. Now you're gonna say, where in the world did I get all those batteries that you can't get nowadays? Well, I made them out of nine volt batteries. See how this comes off you? This has got belt loops on it right here. So you can put it on your belt and then you can go around prospecting for uh, uranium. Uh, Trinity sites open on April the 4th of this year as it is every year. It's not always that same day, but it's open twice a year. I may go up there again. I've been up there three times. I made a uh, YouTube video my grandson and I did with a Geiger counter, but I want to show you what this thing does. Uh, first of all, I think it's important to show you a little bit about the battery pack. I'm not going to pull it all the way out because it's just a lot of trouble. But see the four, uh, the four D size batteries. You have to be careful with them because the uh, some of the D size batteries, the, the bottom of them, the rear end, the negative side has some of this type of um, insulation around it and it doesn't let the, uh, the contacts of this battery holder contact it good. What I did right here is I put eight 9 volt batteries in series, that's 72 volts. And then over here I put three 9 volt batteries in series, gives me 27. That's for the 22 and a half. You could only use two and it works just as well. And here's the other one. And you can use, uh, instead of using eight, you can use seven and it works just as well. So the voltage is not absolutely critical. The 67 and a half doesn't have to be exactly 67 and a half. I'm using 72. And for the 22 and a half, I'm using 27. Works great. I just had to modify the clips. But it all fits in there nicely, as you can see. That's how you get your your 67 and a half, your, your 22 and a half, your 22 and a half, and there's your four one and a half volt D cells. These are for the filaments of the tubes in this thing. This thing is full of little tiny vacuum tubes. It's just gorgeous. I don't think this thing's ever been used. Anyway, there it is. Uh, I'm not any kind of a nuclear scientist. I claim no advanced knowledge of any of this stuff, but it's just such a gorgeous instrument. That looks like something right out of a 1950s um, horror movie, you know? But anyway, I want to show you how it works. It's on right now, and I've calibrated it. Uh, not calibrated, but zeroed it. You you screw this thing off right here. I think this is where I got some of those uh, nuts that I have over some of the other ones. And you turn that until it's zero, which it is. It's very, very sensitive. If I put it all the way up on its most sensitive spot, this will be the background. It rises kind of slow. It's kind of interesting. It's got a, it's actually in medium. Let's put it in fast right now. So it responds a little bit faster to background. There it is, background. And you can see that. Uh, here's calibration. I, I don't know how to calibrate it, but it seems to be and do about the same thing as my Geiger counter. Okay, now here's some of that old vintage um, Fiesta wear. I'll put that at it and you'll see. This thing only detects gamma. Watch this. See, it kind of sees it. Not really, huh? Yeah, maybe a little bit sometimes. Not too much though, huh? Anyway, that's pretty much background. I guess this thing is not giving off much gamma. They use uranium oxide to make these things orange. That's why they're radioactive. They put out beta. Now, I have some perfectly legal, uh, pretty hot uh, specimens right here. If I put it up close to that thing, you can see it pegs it. So I have to crank it down. See there? 
pegs it, does pretty good. And that's just gamma, because it's coming through this metal, this lead, and then uh, this steel right here too. So there you go. But it does work, huh? You can crank down the sensitivity. If I, you know, open it up and stick it in there. I got my gloves on just in case I handle it. Being around radioactive things don't does not make you radioactive, but you don't want to get radioactive material on you, even small amounts. What's inside this thing? You, I'm sure you, you probably would want to know. This is stuff I get off of eBay. This is nothing real and serious. These little lead pigs, and the same thing with these labels. So I'm not doing anything really weird here. But I do have some pretty nice specimens here that I've collected over the years with pitch blend and, and what have you. And if I stick this thing straight up to there, and then if you stick it up to a Geiger counter uh, and open up the uh, gamma shield, it's uh, really, really pretty impressive. That's what's in there. But I do try to keep everything stored away and safe. Here's these little check things that come with it. That little dot in the middle is, is sort of sort of hot. Let's see how much. Puts out a, just a little bit of gamma right there. Right? Let's crank up the sensitivity all the way. Yeah, see it sees that, huh? So there is a little bit of gamma coming out of there. Amazing it. I'm only documenting this for the fact that it works. Made in 1954, so that makes it uh, 61 years old, and it's still working, and it's just beautiful condition. I'm totally amazed. Here's the uh, the case. See, hardly a scratch on it. I think they bought it and then put it up. They must have put it in a safe vault or something that's in such nice shape. But if nothing else you can get out of this, if you run across batteries, I mean uh, instruments that need batteries like the 67 and a half volt to 22 and a half, you just take, if you take 9 volt batteries and you know how they have the male and the female, you just click them together and you can put them all in series. And if you can get pretty close, plus or minus 2 or 3 volts either side, they, uh, they usually work. That's how I uh, resurrected this guy right here. Yeah, see right there. It's called, uh, even the label is beautiful still. So there you go. I think that's really about all I wanted to show you. Uh, I have gotten some of these old instruments before and I, and I make YouTube videos out of them because I know they're not going to last forever. And just the fact that they're here, I don't see one on YouTube um, documenting this guy right here. See, it's, 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 it's seeing this stuff right here. Yeah, it's, you know, it's pegging it when we take it, when we open it up. It, uh, it really sees it there now. That's on uh, the third less sensitive scale. It's actually more sensitive than the Geiger counter. But I will show you what a Geiger counter does too. I have it turned on. I gotta show you this. Get around to the other side. The way that I've done my my Geiger counter. Don't want to get in a hurry and bust something here. If my Geiger counter set up is I take the output here and run it into a little speaker right here. here I... And then when we put something close to it, it makes a lot of noise and we can hear it. I guess that's the hot spot on it. And if we open up the uh, the shield here so it can see uh, beta, then these uh, samples are, are really nice. The uh, scintillator is only going to see what goes through the steel, which is the gamma, which is, so, they work. Calibration? Have no idea. They seem to do, both do about the same thing, so I've, I figure they're okay. Yeah, even little samples can be pretty hot. Here's one right here. I 
had written on there where all these things came from, but I've handled them so much I don't even know anymore. Uh, the ones on the side put out basically zero gamma. They do put out a little beta if you open up the window again. So you can see that. You can hear it. And these uh, check sources, whatever I did with them, here. It's pretty hot. See, the, the, window, the window's open. Window closed. Not too much. I think the scintillator is actually a little bit more sensitive. But anyway, there it is, 1954. Made good stuff. Still working. You can still make your own batteries. Not make your own batteries, but you can. I think the check source goes right there. Uh, and uh, you can still make this whole stuff work. Yeah, uh, I would take it apart and show you, but it's a little difficult, and I don't want to bust it. But when you twist this thing, it, this comes off. And it's got, I think, about eight little tiny vacuum tubes in it. I love it. Hope you enjoy some of this old vintage stuff. It's amazing uh, the things that are still around.